Hello, YouTube. This is me again, your girl. I am the Medusa, and I am here again. And thank you guys for actually joining me again. And thank you for, to all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button and also the notification button to actually become part of the family. All right. Um. Okay. What am I actually gonna be doing today to you guys? I'm gonna give you guys about the abuse, the discrimination, and also the the um struggles that transgender people go through every time when they go for a, for an interview for a job interview or they, they they go to send their resume or cv in our language to um get a job so we're going to be looking at those things and also the abuse that they've experienced we're talking about physical abuse and all type of abuse please stay tuned with me and then we'll get down to it and you will see the video that i've compiled for you guys it's very good you love it and you'll understand exactly what I, am i talking about <music> Standing, you go into a workplace and there is a trans person that's there. It becomes like a, a common air over a person that that person every day has to fight to defend themselves. On Lala Zanel, Lala Zanel explained exactly um, on how people are so ignorant to the transgender community in terms of their rights. Those people, they, they actually don't see it as a violence to not hire a transgender person because they're transgender they will just easily say that okay we don't want to hire this one she's transgender or he's transgender or he's gay or he's whatsoever i don't want to do that because i'll give you a mini story that actually happened to me once upon a time um i was trying to apply for this particular job and at that time i was um dressing as male i was dressing as trevor my um male name and um what i've actually discovered is that um I went for an interview i really wanted that job and my friend was hooking me up with that company and she was working there and then i went there for an interview the interview went very well i loved it everything was good so i just wanted to just apply so what actually happened is that um they did not hire me because i am gay they called they called me gay at that time because they, they saw that i was gay um i've asked my friend to actually confirm exactly why didn't they hire me and then she said to me i've i've discovered that they didn't want to hire you because you are gay so that's how i find out but it, that is the very short version of it it actually um took place in a very um uh and it there were so many things involved so i cannot actually go through them right now i just want you guys to just watch this and then say exactly what am i talking about when i say that some people are ignorant to our rights as transgender people <music> It is hard for transgender people to get work, but we're all human and we all have to live and survive. You know, it's not fair that we have to, to pretend to be somebody that we're not to do the things that we love. It's like, how, how is anybody ever going to take me seriously? How am I going to be able to put my resume out there and find a job? 90% of the American transgender community have actually re reported that they've actually experienced discrimination they've experienced abuse in their workplace and also 29 percent of transgender people in america shows that they have been living in poverty because they cannot even apply for jobs and to actually explain that even further when it comes to south african we have discovered that many of our transgender sisters they actually end up doing sex worker jobs and as per that results it actually shows that most of those people they actually went to colleges they went to varsities they've got so many qualifications that they, they could be applying it's not that they're not even educated that is not even the case the case is the discrimination at their workplaces and most of our south african transgender people have actually moved out of their homes they have actually moved away from their families because the discrimination is just very broad it can actually discomfort you from your home to your workplace so that's why they they want to isolate themselves and, and 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 try to live their lives somewhere else which that ends up actually um putting more of people under the sex worker community because they need to make a living so let's just go through this and then see exactly let's check on jc's story and then we can discover exactly how does she feel about living the double life in terms of um now you're male now you're female here comes a video with jc she will be explaining more about this I, 
I was working in a job that was very transphobic. I've been in almost every style of restaurant around the country, around, yeah, around the United States, and I've encountered it in all of them. I usually describe it as a boys club. It's a very masculine, heterosexual driven job. I was living as a male at work and female outside of work, and it raises a high level of anxiety to have to switch back and forth between these two roles. I knew that if I didn't transition, I was gonna die anyways. That's how depressed I was. As you can actually see exactly that, um, Jesse was so depressed about living this double life in terms of now, um, during, the, um, during work hours, you are a male. Then after hours, you, you are a female. This thing is, it creates a lot of anxiety. It creates a lot of depression. It creates a lot of emotional baggage. Because I do remember I was also living the same life on my last job. I remember one time explaining to my best friend one time, I'm like, I am sick and tired of living this, this double life. It's too hard for me. Now, during the day, I am Trevor. At night, I am Ayanda. I cannot actually live this double life. I just want to live my truth. I just want to be myself. I want to walk to a, an interview, to an office, looking the way that I, I, I look right now. I look respectful. I look professional. I look like I'm ready to do my job. Why does it matter that I'm wearing so much makeup? On this insight that I'm about to actually link you right now, guys, it's actually going to be explaining more about how much abuse we enjoy in our workplace because we we are experiencing a lot of abuse in terms of um our colleagues right now jc is going to be explaining exactly what happened to her at a work function at a christmas work function so please check this video and then you can see exactly what am i talking about at the christmas party that year i was struck in the face by some of the, the people that worked there and knocked unconscious. When I came to, I was covered in blood. I had a fracture in my skull and that my orbital socket underneath my eye was shattered. I had two fractures in my nose. That's when it kind of dawned on me how serious this was. Case, it can be a boys club. That's what actually happened to, to me also. I've also experienced that in every job that I've went to, the time when I was able to um, not wear makeup, just go with my natural hair and just look like, you know, I'm somebody's uncle because I always call myself, I'm somebody's uncle. I'm going to bring up a picture right now to see exactly how depressed and how ill I look. <laughs> I call myself, like, I look like ill. So here's a picture right now. It shows exactly how I looked at that time and it's so horrible. You guys, I cannot even look at the picture. This is me on my depressed mode, on my, I want a job, I want to work, I want to make a living. Look, it hot. It is horrible. So please eat. Back to my next one. Okay, um, the next one is the document change, exchange. Because remember, when you're transitioning, you have to go and change from um, M to F. So you have to change that M to F from your driver's license, from your ID copy, um, from everything that actually resembles that you are a male. So that everything could, could actually correspond and also you don't get to be in in trouble with the law in terms of but you look like a female why is your documents showing that you're a male because now you look like you're doing fraud or anything like that so on my next video right now that's what we're going to be looking at it's going to be all about what we go through as transgender people and try to actually make sure that we actually explain what we experience in in terms of exchanging our documents and i, I want you guys to also look at how Jesse looks and feel after she had actually got her documents changed from male to female. Here comes a video. Please check it out. For trans um, folks, and we can't just stay within our walls. We don't live in the LGBT bubble all day. So a lot of people can't get past their entry points. Sometimes their documentation doesn't match who they are. People think, oh, you just get it changed. Some states don't allow you to do that. You know, some states are like, you can change your name, but you can't change your birth certificate. So now you have your name changed, but your birth certificate is like, now they're saying you're being fraudulent. You're trying to fool us. Have 
anxiety doing these things is because I'm gonna have to out myself to get the proper documents. Even though I've been in Maine for six months, I haven't been able to get my residency secured here. So I just got my birth certificate. I'm gonna go today and try to transfer my driver's license from Arkansas to Maine. Hi, I need to transfer my driver's license from out of state. We have a specialized process that we have to use for when you change the Yeah. Is this what you are thinking when you realize this will have? Yes, I mean, it has to have that because for safety reasons, there cannot be an elm on that. This is the first time I've had encountered this. She is requiring that I have a letter from a doctor or physician to keep the F on my driver's license. She said she had to make a phone call to see what she could do. So are you okay. So I think it's kind of going to wait until I got the director's approval. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for you. Uh, thank you so much. They tried to put it as an M, but they they got an override and put the F on it. I am a female resident of Maine now. Over 41% of transgender people have tried to commit suicide. This number will go up if we keep on this abuse going on and on. I want to tell you guys because I've also fallen into that number. This is only the stats of what's being reported. What about those cases that were not reported? My case was not reported. So that means the number does go up. So how many people will have to lose their life because people don't want to change their mentality, their understanding of the LGBTQ community? So please, whether you're straight or gay or bisexual or whatever you are, you are affected by the transgender treatment that's been going on out there. So you need to educate yourself as a person and find out exactly what's going on with this human being. You don't want to be the cause of someone's death because you don't want to change your regulation. Even at the workplace, it's so unfair to work so hard, to have so many qualifications, to have so much experience and then be not be hired because you are transitioning. So I wish our government and everybody in the politics side, they could actually see that and then take action because this is serious. Guys, please stop discrimination. Stop the transport you guys are giving us. Thank you very much. I'm your girl Medusa, signing out. Bye. Now I kind of hold my head high as a transgender person. Don't ever be afraid. Put yourself out there and reach for your goals because you have the opportunity to lead the way for the next generation.